stuck in traffic. I just want to go to the monster truck show, but we're stuck in traffic. I don't think they're going to wait for us. Jesus, these are huge. <laughs> My name is Dan Meyer. I live and work in Brooklyn, New York. I'm good friends with the producer of the On Acid series, and he asked me if I would like to do an episode at a monster truck rally. This is Monster Trucks on Acid. I've never been to one of these things. Um, I really don't. I wish I was What are you doing back there? We're just switching seats. So what the hell? Switch. Man, you guys got three different kinds of pants on. <laughs> That's so much fabric. <laughs> That's so much. <laughs> There's a lot of fabric back there. We were driving from New York to Hartford, Connecticut to the Monster Truck Rally. Oh, yeah, this is pretty good, serious stuff. So this is the first time I'd done liquid LSD. Before, it always been paper. I took two hits thinking that my tolerance to psychedelia was pretty high. <sighs> like, my body feels very strange. Back of my head, like, I feel like there's something inside my head that wants to come out. Just drink some water. Yeah. Oh, yeah, chill out for a second. Yeah. I do think I maybe underestimated the strength of it. I need a moment. By the time I got there, I was already fully in the throes of an acid pie. <sighs> I need to take a second. Okay, hold on. Let's come over here for a second. I got a guy with a camera behind me following me. Glenn, can you stop for a second? As if I was like a host of like a news program. And rolling. I'm in Hartford, Connecticut. I don't know. We're in Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, home of apparently car culture, it seems like. We're gonna go watch some monster trucks on acid. Our media host, she had been calling and texting us to make sure we were gonna be there. I think she was expecting some sort of normal media group to show up. She handed me like a release form to sign and I didn't even know how to write my name. Can you just vouch for me that this is a, okay? I guess I have to. And I couldn't obviously read it. And I'm asking the guys I'm with to read this for me. Did I sign that? Okay. Yeah, you did. You know, she wasn't sure I was the host at first. I did some research, you know, yeah. I started to figure out who's who, but I, it's, it's tough, you know, and imagine. There's a lot of them. People go crazy, and the music is the, uh, the, 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 and the crowd, they always put the lights out, and the lights up. She didn't know I was on acid at all. And I was trying not to let her figure it out. Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, could have. No one told me I shouldn't, but I just seemed like the right thing to do was to not tell her, because I figured that would probably give her the creeps. So that was like an element of secrecy that I'm not really used to that we had to maintain. Where, where are the judges? And then all of a sudden we hear the noise the first time. It's just this extremely abrasive noise that just like sh shakes you to the bone. Just ripping. This is like, okay, here it is. Damn, like you're fucking high as a kite. The tire tracks in the dirt, when they would turn, they would create a spiral into the earth. And I was like, just staring at that. And then like light was coming in and out of it and then you'd be ripped back to reality when the cars would jump off. At this point, I'm like losing track of reality, holding on to my sanity. And there's this truck, it's supposed to be like a school bus. And I'm like just completely bewildered as to what is the point of all this? Like who are these people that have come here?
And then there's a truck that looks exactly like a dog named the Rottweiler Mutt. It's got dog ears, it's got a face of a dog, it's got a tongue. And that's just strange enough. It was hot. The air is just thick with exhaust and dust that's being kicked up. I'm like, by myself, just like, losing it. That was when I would say I was tripping balls. I just wanted out. I'm completely overwhelmed. Did anybody stand out that you'd like to talk to? And I had to put on this front like I was a host of something. I've never hosted anything before. I need someone to tell me who to talk to. I can't make decisions right now, and these guys are all just telling me to do okay, stuff. sure, why don't you get that plugged in? They've just handed me this thing. When they handed me the microphone, I didn't know what the hell to do with it. And you, Grave Digger, you said, is who you like to see, but who do you got, or, I don't know, I'm confused. You know, I wanted to have interview questions to ask people, but it was impossible for me to talk to anybody. Yep. Well, excuse me, what are you guys making? Can I talk to you about it? I was terrified of everyone. Nobody looked normal to me. I don't know anything about this world. Different creatures, gigantic beasts. This is just, I can't, I can't explain this. I can't explain it. And I'm like, I can't, like, I can't talk right now, guys. Sorry, like, I know I'm supposed to be talking, but I can't. I got my notepad. And that's when I realized how high I still was. It smells, it smells really bad. You guys keep forgetting what is going on in my head right now. <laughs> it's like, you keep acting like this normal day of work for everyone, but I'm like, and I'm just like, literally want out. I'm finished. I'm like, okay, we've seen it, we've done it, I've been here, I've done that. But she's telling us, like, we gotta wait because we're gonna interview one of the drivers. I had a few words with the producer. I need help coming up with questions for this guy. I don't know what I'm gonna ask this driver. How do you, th how do you feel the show went? I asked him if they were bummed to lose or how to win. I'm not gonna ask him if they're bummed to lose. How long they've been doing before. Just general questions. We're late to the interview. I was terrified. The thought of having to interview a truck driver at this point was so upsetting to me. I was sweating. I was so upset. As I rush in to interview this guy who I think hates me, he's ready. And then the driver's standing behind the table, and it would have only made sense for me to go around the table and probably sit down with him. All right. And uh, sir, what is your name? I'm Pat Suma. And your truck is? Thrasher. Thrasher. And you're from? But uh, instead, the thought of that is too bewildering for me. So I just say, fuck it. I'm going to just interview him from across the table. I look over and everyone in my crew is not even watching, because apparently it's so awkward that they don't even want to watch. Did you uh, rank this on a scale of 1 to 10 this weekend? What would you say it would come in at? Definitely 10. Yeah. I don't remember one word of the conversation. And I was actually just paranoid at that point that the truck driver was going to kill me and that, you know, I was very paranoid the whole night. Nice to meet you. Have a good trip yeah, back home. You and our guides seem to really bond with what you're down there. That's drive it over there yeah. I kind of like okay. started to like her a lot. <laughs> Going down downstairs to where there's some fresh air. <laughs> she takes us out into this cold garage, and I don't know where we're going. Can we just get a shot? Can we go over there real quick? And then we start walking by all the crash cars, which is like cool. still my favorite zone because it was like peaceful and kind of beautiful. The reason they're all these bright colors is mm -hmm. so they can see them. Sometimes they're they're blue. Oh, so the drivers can see them better. How do you view the experience? A few of my friends have asked me if it was fun. I wouldn't use the word fun at all. I would say it was challenging and like difficult. 
You look back on it as an accomplishment? I mean, I sort of look at it as an accomplishment, but in the most pointless sense of the term, like there was no point to it. So yeah, a pointless accomplishment. That's a good area though, right? Oh yeah. Is that just me? That is. That's my favorite area here, so here. far. I could just hang out in here all day. Thank you, sir. Talk about it later. <laughs> what are they doing in there? Oh, I just want to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm not an animal activist. It's more about exposing the subcultures in society. The animals is not really the story. What's happening to the animals is the story. And, and that cause is actually these subcultures of smugglers and poachers and customers. That's what I'm interested in.